The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Growers. Hey, it's Jessica Goose with realagriculture.com. On this Canola School episode, we talk about the best and most economic seeding rate. We also touch base on the Canola Council of Canada's newest tool in the box for farmers to use this seeding season. Joining me right now is Sean Sanko, who is a agrology specialist with the Canola Council of Canada. Sean, how are you doing today? Good, thanks. Good. And it's uh, a little chilly out here. Yes. Uh, it is windy. We are in Saskatchewan. Uh, there's not too uh, many mountains out here to uh, block that wind, but uh, that's not what we're talking about today. Today, we are talking about the uh, Canola Council of Canada's new kind of seed cost calculator that you guys have just unveiled as of this week. Uh, what can you kind of tell me about it and how will it help farmers, uh, I guess, with the uh, seeding overall? Well, it's, the, the new part is the economics added to it. So with, I can't remember now if it's been two years since we actually released the, um, the seed rate calculator. And now what we've added on to it is the, the economic portion. So just, you know, any, any decisions really always come down to that economics at the end. So just giving the producers that, that economic information now is the, the addition to the, the seeding rate calculator. Mm-hmm. Is there anything that kind of sticks out for you that, uh, that is beneficial for the producer? Uh, you know, it just gives them, you know, I guess the biggest thing is helping change from, you know, in the past we've always been five pounds per acre um, seeding rate and just wrapping your head around going now to a plant stand calculation, it just makes it simple. It's a lot easier than having to, to sit down and try to calculate out in a formula. It just makes that simple. Mm-hmm. And I've looked at it already. It does actually look very user friendly and you can find it on the Canola Council of Canada's website, right? Yes. Uh, canolacalculator.ca, I believe. Okay, so, canolacalculator.ca. Yeah. We will be sure to uh, link that in the story here if you are listening to our podcast. Um, so let's take a second here to talk about um, farming implements and why um, maybe the implement might impact uh, the seed survivability. Yeah, it's, it's just important to you know make sure if you've, uh, whether it's an older drill you've had for a while or a new one, just um, make sure you're getting that, that proper seeding depth, make sure the, the drill's level. And um, you know that that's one of the most uh, important things. Canola is a small seed, so you want to make sure you're in that that right seeding depth. That you know you say about three quarters of an inch or so is kind of the the key depth. You don't want to have um, it much deeper than that. You know, in the past I've been called out to fields with poor emergence, and it, sometimes it's three inches. So you know, just making sure that you've got a good seeding depth. Gotcha. And do you find maybe farmers don't look at that leveler option right right off the bat you know a new piece of equipment they just want to jump in and go yeah that or they you know they'll just do it once and maybe check near a hard spot you know near the the entrance where it just isn't sinking in um or from one field and not going to to other fields you know from moisture can change it or soil conditions or just different soil types you might think you have it set at one field and it, it changes to another field so at least change, checking on every field exactly okay so uh, kind of formula for choosing a rate how do you go about that well, first of all, you, you decide what you want for a, a plant stand, you know, and we're, we're kind of saying that five to eight plants per, per square foot range. Um, then you enter your, your seed size, and then the other um, key really is that survivability. And a lot of guys don't know that yet, so we usually say, you know, start at 60% because across the prairies we're 50 to 60% um, overall average of seed survivability. But the key is really going on doing that plant stand count um, and knowing what you've got. So, you know, if you haven't done it in the past, going out this year after you've seeded and seeing, you know, what is my survivability? Is it 50-60 um, or is it a bit higher and I can, I can change it next year? So yeah, just learning that's a big part of it. Good, good. Now, uh, in regards to the target for plant density, uh, how are farmers kind of able to uh, to be able to cut back from it if they if they choose to? Well, we, we like to see it in that that five to eight plants per square foot. That's kind of key. Um, you know, it's I guess if you when you're determining within that range, or if you you really decide to to cut back, I mean, you, you have to look at things like um, uh, insect pressure. Um, it, you know, if you've got a thin plant stand, it'll it'll um, be damaged much quicker with with insects a uh, much shorter time frame less food to eat they'll they'll eat uh, faster right so that um you know your best competition for weeds is is still the the crop so a thinner plant stand won't have as much competition for weeds uh there's just there's a bunch of things you gotta you look at down the road so it um cutting back can can cost you in the, in the end mm-hmm. yeah. anything else that kind of just sticks out for you for i guess last year's plant going forward uh in regards to it of what you maybe saw a lot of um 
you know, it, it just depends. The spring can be so different. Like last year, we saw a lot of flea beetle pressure. So that's kind of why we have that range in there. Um, you know, in the past, if you've seen a lot of flea beetle pressure, it might be something you want an extra plant or two per square foot beyond the, the high range of that five to eight so that um, you've got some buffer there. You know, if it won't, uh, if you see the a few plants disappear, you're still not going to get the yield hit in the end. There you go. Um, I guess what's the danger of cutting back? You know, if, if you do it too much, or what could you kind of see? Well, you can, I mean, you know, yield loss is probably number one. Canola is really, um, uh, plastic can, you know, compensate a lot, but it only to a point. Um, things like last, you know, we saw that, that last fall really tough, um, a little bit earlier of a frost. So as soon as you get a thinner plant stand, your maturity can be lengthened some. Um, and like I said, you know, weed competition, we're seeing a lot more, um, you know, resistance in, in weeds now. So we, we don't want to rely as heavily on the herbicide. You know, we want the, the plant stand to, to block out that light, choke it out. So if you've got bare patches that, um, you know, that's not doing its job. If you are going to cut back, I guess, what's kind of the best advice for, um, for risk management? Uh, weed control, top dress, uh, fertility, kind of other things. Is there anything you can point out? Yeah, I mean, everything has to be just that much higher in management strategy. I mean, it's you, you've got to be probably the, the number one thing is just being out in the crop. Um, it, it's you just can't um, you know let it stand. You have to go out there and, and watch it then because it like I say, if, if you do get insect damage, um, it can be damaged really quickly. There's not near as many plants to to buffer that. So you know, watching for that um, herbicide. You know, may, it might need an application down the road if you haven't got a thick plant stand. Um, just kind of everything management goes up whenever you've got a, a lighter plant stand. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for listening to our latest Canola School. To check others out, head to canolaschool.com.